Adding texture to design work is a powerful technique for creating more lifelike designs. But how can you add texture to design work? Well, stay tuned to find out. What's up designers, welcome back to Digifrog Designs. If you're new here, I'm Matt Roberts, brand identity designer and illustrator. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through a few ways that you can use to add texture to your typography in Photoshop. Although we're gonna be focusing mainly on typography today, the techniques that we're gonna be discussing, you can use to add texture to your illustrations, photography, or whatever your heart desires. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. We post new videos every Wednesday, helping you become a better designer. Let's jump into Photoshop and get started. So now we've got Photoshop fired up. The first thing that we need to do is actually get our texture file that we want to add to our typography. I'm going to be showing you how to make a texture file using this image of the pavement I've taken from outside, but you can use any texture packs you find online or anything like that. The first thing that we need to do is convert this document to grayscale. So I'm going to come to image, mode, and then grayscale. I'm just going to click on discard. Once I've done that, I'm going to unlock the layer by double clicking and then just click on OK. Now we've got the document into grayscale. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to come up to image, adjustments, and then levels. And then what I want to do is I want to pull these as close together as possible to reduce the amount of gray that's in the image. So we're only seeing blacks and whites. And as you can see, by altering the position, it actually alters the intensity of the texture that we're going to be creating. So I'm just going to play about with these until I find somewhere that I'm happy with. The goal is to try and get these as close together as possible. So we're just showing blacks and whites. And if I just zoom in on that now, you can just see it's pretty much just blacks and whites. There is a couple of grays in there, but predominantly it is just blacks and whites. But as you can see, if I drop them a bit closer, some of those grays are dropping out. And I think I'm kind of happy with where that is now. So once I've got it somewhere I'm happy with, I'm just going to hit OK. So that's the start of our texture file. From here, there's actually a couple of different ways that we can approach applying this to our typography. The first way that I'm going to be showing you is using a knockout group. So for that, I need to remove the white areas of this so we're just left with the black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to select, then color range, and I'm just going to hit on an area of white. Once I've done that, I'm just going to hit an OK. So now I've got that area selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to select and then inverse. Once I've selected the inverse, I'm going to create a new layer by coming up to layer, new, new layer, and then hit on OK. And then what I want to do is I want to fill my inverted selection with black. So you can either come up to edit, fill, and then click background color because I've got my background color set to black and hit on OK. Or you could command backspace or control on Windows um, to do the same thing. So if I turn off my background layer now, you can see I'm just left with the black there. So now to add this to our typography. So I've got this document set up here and I want to be adding this texture to the texture word here. So I'm going to come back to my original document. I'm going to select my texture layer and then I'm just going to drag it over into and I'm going to drop that on there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm just going to resize my texture. As you can see, it's quite large. So I'm just going to resize that and then rotate it so it sits on top of the word there. So because it's on a dark background, that actually works quite well. But if I were to put this on a light background, so let me just add in a white background, you can see the overspill of the texture. To combat that, what I'm gonna do is, like we mentioned before, I'm gonna use a knockout group. So what I want to do is I wanna grab my texture, text layer, and I wanna grab my texture layer, and I want to group them. So I'm gonna right click, and then come up to group from layers. Once I've done that, I'm gonna hit an okay. And now I'm just going to open that up. And then what I want to do is I want to come to my texture layer and I want to double click on it. I'm going to come to this advanced blending section here and I want to turn the fill opacity right the way down. Once I've done that, you'll see that it's actually removed it from the type, but that's fine. And the next thing that we're going to focus on here is this knockout section. 
And what I want to do is just drop that down and then hit on shallow. And what that'll do, it'll actually knock the texture out of the text. Once I've done that, I want to hit an OK. And if I put that same white background on as we had before, we won't see it. But what I'll do is I'll just change my text color for a second to black. And you can see that the texture's actually only affecting the text and not the background as well. So it's, it's almost clipped the texture to the typography. And using this knockout group, what you can actually do is let me just put this back to white and then back to my dark background. What you can actually do as well is anything that comes into this group here under the texture layer will add this texture to. So if I were to take my um, two typography layer and drop that in the group below the texture, you can see it's now added the texture to that as well. And if I do the same with how to below the texture layer, it's added the texture to it as well. Depending on the look that you're going for, um, this is a texture that we've used, created using um, a photo from outside. But say you were using this to create a rubber stamp effect or something like that, and you didn't want the texture to go to the edges. There's a way that we can combat that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate the texture type layer. And I'm going to drag that above the texture layer. And for now, you won't be able to see it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click to bring up the layer styles again. And then what, do the same thing that we did before with the fill opacity. I'm just going to drop that all the way down and that's brought the texture back. I'm going to use an inner glow to stop the texture going right the way to the edge of the text. So I'm going to turn on my inner glow and I'm going to make it the same color as my text. And then what I want to do is I want to be playing around with the size and the choke to get it to somewhere where it looks the way that I want it to look. And what I'll need to do is just turn it onto normal as well and bring the opacity all the way up. So you can see pulling that in there has created quite a strong edge and you can manipulate that to however you want. If you play around with a choke, you can actually vary how it actually impacts and how much it intrudes on the texture. Once you've got it somewhere that you're happy with, hit an OK. So there's our texture added with our inner glow applied. But if the text looking too pristine, what you can actually do is you can use the ripple um, filter to add some shape and variation to these to make them look a little bit more realistic. So what you can do is come up to filter and then it's under distort, ripple. I'm going to convert to smart object. And because my text is quite large, I'm going to use large setting and then I'm just going to drop it down to somewhere around 20% maybe, 20, 25%. And I'm going to hit an OK. And I'm just going to do the same with my copied layer. And if I come in, you see that's added the ripple there. It's possibly a little too much, but depending on the look that you're going for, it might be exactly the look you need. So there's the first way that you can use to add texture to your typography. So for the second way to add texture to typography, it's actually creating a texture brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to return back to my original texture that we had, and I'm going to select all. And then I'm going to come up to edit and then define brush preset. Once I've done that, I'm going to give it a name and then hit on OK. Once I've done that, I'm going to come back to my document and I'm going to come to my texture layer and I'm going to add a layer mask. The reason I'm doing that is it's non-destructive and we can adjust the texture as many times as we want until we get it to how we want it. Now I've got my layer mask on and my layer mask selected i'm going to come over to my brush tool once i've selected my brush tool i'm going to come up and select my texture brush it should be the bottom one in the list once i've done that i'm just going to make sure that i'm on my mask and remember black conceals and white reveals so i'm going to make sure that i've got black set and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to reduce the size of my texture brush depending on how large your texture brush is, you might not see it to start off with. 
And as you can see, the texture brush now is starting to come into view. I'm just going to resize it so it's just slightly larger than my text. And then I'm just going to click. Once I've done that, you can see that the texture has been added to my typography. And once you've got your texture brush, you don't have to stop there. What you can use is if you use your brush properties or your brush settings, sorry, you can actually change the direction of your brush. So you can actually vary the texture that you're creating. But say we've got too much, we can go in and use the white and bring back some of the original document there. And as before, if we don't want our texture to go right to the edge, what we can do is we can duplicate the layer, delete our layer mask, and then come up to our blending options, drop our fill, and add the inner glow back on. And there we have it. That's two ways that you can use to add texture to your typography. Thanks for watching designers. If you like this video, smash that subscribe button, give it a like, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. Share this video with your friends on social. It really helps reach more people, educating them on building better brands and showing them what actually goes into designing them. And shop the merch to support the channel and show you part of the DFD crew. I'll catch you next week, designers.